Hey, Tactical Painter, back out in the Suits Crafting Woodshop. Welcome on out to the shop. Welcome to Shop Talk Tuesday. I think episode 7 this is, episode 8. Uh, one of those. It's one of those. You know, we're getting on it through. Coming out to you each week on Tuesdays in order to just give you guys an update as to the stuff we got going on out the shop. So last week, I talked to you guys about the flu, get your vaccinations. Uh, this week, doing much better. Family's healthy, everyone's doing pretty good. And we have had a really productive week out here in the shop. It has been fantastic. It's been a reprieve to actually get out and get some stuff accomplished this week. Um, and, and it felt really good. I've got some really big announcements today, so stick around and we're going to get through those. One of the big things that I've been doing this week is shop cleanup. Shop cleanup sometimes when you're really busy in the shop kind of tends to go by the wayside. Um, I was talking with somebody just the other week and she was saying that she uh, she crochets. You know, she does a lot of crocheting and knitting and stuff and she makes a lot of items and as she goes, she gets taller as she, as she works. And I didn't know what she meant by that. I was like, what do you mean by you get taller? And she goes, well, as I crocheting and I'm knitting, and all the stuff is just falling at my feet, you know, I just put my feet up on top of it. And then I just grow and grow and grow and, and all of a sudden I'm taller. And it's like, you know, sometimes things get like that. It's not always a good habit. You know, if you've got a lot of stuff to do, you don't always worry about like sweeping your floor um, or keeping shelves organized or your, your workspaces picked up and clean. And so we kind of do the same thing out uh, with the lathe. You know, as the piles on the floor get taller, I tend to grow a little higher. And then I have to clean it up, you know, and things like that happen. But be sure to keep your shops clean because a clean shop is a safe shop. And you never know when you're going to throw a spring or a small part. It's going to land in that pile and you're going to end up having to go through it. And that's not any fun. But I've been cleaning up the shop. I've got a lot more space because I've got a big announcement. I got a big delivery, had to get space ready and created for this thing. Let me flip you around and show you what we got. I now have a bandsaw in the shop. So we got this nice, it's a Rikon 14 inch bandsaw with an open stand. Got 14 inches of cutting capacity right here in the top. We got a nice rip fence. It's got just some awesome features. Really excited to get out and tell you guys about this thing. I've just been, I've been antsy. I've been wanting to get out and tell you guys about it. I picked this thing up last Friday. And we brought it home. Um, Woodcraft is having a big 15% off Rikon sale. And went and picked this thing up the day of the sale, the 15th. And we were just so excited. Got it all set up. Had to clean out this whole space around it in here. And get it ready to go. So I've been using this thing. Um, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you've seen that I've been getting... A bunch of uh, pen blanks ready to go. More of the uh, calico spalted maple burl pen blanks uh, stabilized. And so that's because of this bandsaw. Got the bandsaw in here. I'm able to cut up all of the blanks that I need to. Got them in the stabilization juice right now. They're soaking up stabilization juice. I'll be able to bake them tomorrow morning. And then I'll be getting those up on the site. So that way you guys can get those purchased. But got a bandsaw. Big 14 incher. So excited for this. You know, I was just going to get like a, the 10 inch deluxe Rikon bandsaw. I'm talking to my dad, he's got a 12 inch old craftsman. And he said, you know, he bought the 12 inch and immediately regretted it. He wished that he'd gotten the bigger uh, 14 inch bandsaw all those years ago. And so, listening to, to him talking, I decided, you know what, I'm going to get the 14 inch because I did not want to have regrets like that. You'd need to have a tool that's going to fit the size of what you want to do. And often I'll get big chunks of burl and big logs and things that I want to cut up. And sometimes using his 12 inch bandsaw, the capacity on that, it just is not enough. And so went with the big 14 inch, already super happy with that purchase. And let me tell you, this thing is massive. I stand at 6 foot 3 and the top of this, uh, the blade guard post that the, the blade guard goes up into is as tall as I am. So this thing is huge. Super excited to have this out in the shop. Let's flip you around and show you something else I got going on here behind me. So in this other corner of my shop, directly behind the bandsaw, I've been doing a whole bunch of organizing over in this corner. Um, I've got some tools on some shelves that are down here and down below. Um, chop saws and drum sander. I've got a drum sander over here that I, I used to use a drum sander a lot back when I made knife handles and scales and stuff a lot. Um, but I, I haven't used it in a while. But I'm going to get back out and making knives again. You know, if that's something you guys are interested, let me know in the comments section down below. Or I'll throw a, a card up here in the corner. 
Um, but I've also got this little shelving unit I picked up at my work. Um, they were selling it for like 10 bucks. I mean, 10 bucks for a steel shelving unit, six foot tall. It's got uh, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, six spots for shelves on it. And so I've got all of my burls and pieces of wood and stuff um, organized and categorized and set up on here. I've got um, maple burl cutoffs from Cook Woods over here in this box here. I've got all these different pieces that I've picked up on eBay that are waiting to get cut for pen blanks or until I decide what I want to do with them. And then um, I've got a lot more exotic woods down here in these boxes down below. And then as well I've also got a bin of just um, just standard boards. You know, I've got pine, some cherry, mahogany, and then a whole bunch of cutoffs of like uh, plywood and stuff too. So got all that organized, super excited and happy to have that. So organization is key, and in order to do that, it created up just this huge section in order to be able to fit the bandsaw in here because all of this was just kind of randomly in boxes and bins and totes and things. So we got all that organized, and it's wonderful. Along with those calico spalted maple burl blanks that I've been getting out, I've also got a whole bunch of of standard maple burl blanks and then also some cutoffs and pieces that are castable they've got neat you know valleys and and um, the the end pieces that you know that end up with these really cool little um, knots and things that stick out and little spikes in the mountains and stuff I've got a whole bunch of those too that I'm gonna work on stabilizing I'm even gonna be dyeing some of them um, different colors so if you guys are interested in that let me know in the comments section down below or vote on the card that they'll throw up here that way I know that you guys are interested in something like that and then if you are let me know the colors and the the types of things you want you know double dye stabilized you know it's something that I've thought about trying out but haven't really gotten into it too much um, Zach from NV Woodworks has a pretty good video on how to do that and I, I haven't dove into that too much you know I've done a lot of die stabilizing um, but I haven't double dyed so we'll we'll see you know if that's something you guys are interested go ahead and let me know alright so one of, the, one of the first projects that I did with the new bandsaw was the cutting up more pen blanks and getting them stabilized second project that I did with the new bandsaw was I made a new mold I went out to my local tap plastics and was digging around through their uh, cut off throwaway bin they'll let you go through and you can buy like for like a buck fifty a pound um, for a lot of the stuff uh, you can buy their cutoffs and so I like to go through there and get HDPE and while I was um, going through there I actually found uh, some sections of 3 8 inch HDPE that are smooth on the side usually I've been buying the 3 quarter inch and 5 8 inch HDPE and they have kind of a, 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 a like a pocketed uh, texture to them. They're kind of, they're not rough, but they're textured. You know, they've got a texture on them, and that texture, of course, imparts itself onto your blanks. And so here's a blank that I've got that I cast up, and you can see that texturing on there. It's got kind of a, a cratered surface, you know, lots of little tiny craters all throughout the entire thing. And so I, when I found that smooth side, I asked them, I was like, where you guys been hiding this from me the whole time, you know? And uh, and they're like, well, anything smaller than a half of an inch comes in the smooth side. It doesn't come with that texturing surface. I was like, that's awesome. I wish I had known that because I would have just bought that straight up instead of getting the uh, all the three quarter stuff with the textured surface. But so I picked up some of those sheets of the three eighths inch, and uh, I wish that I, I had gone with the half inch because the three eighths inch. It's a little thin, uh, I think, for the mold walls. When you run a screw through there, um, you can kind of feel on the outside a little little dimple, just a little this dimple. Um, it's not bad on the inside. There's there's a real small one, but it's not bad. Um, and and I already cast with this one actually, and it turned out fantastic. So here's the casting that I did with it, and you can see so much more vividly the colors that come through uh, from that that casting that blank is just so much more vivid than those textured ones so there's the top and the top you know turns out glossy of course but then the sides are just as glossy and they look just wonderful whereas you look at the sides on these ones I mean and you can't even see any color on there you gotta get just the right angle and you can start to see the purple coming through I mean and these are the exact same blank they I mean the same pore 
So there's, look at all that purple that you have, purple and blue and shifting powders and glitters and stuff. And you look at this one, it's like there's nothing there almost. But, you know, oh, there you can see some, you can see some of the purple up top. But looking at it in person, I can see all the blues and purples and things that are running through there. But you can't see them nearly as well as when you have a glossy surface. So really happy with those. I'm going to be making up more of those molds because uh, they're just superior over these roughened surfaces. Now they'll turn up exactly the same. They're not going to have any difference in the turning. Once you turn them around, you won't even know the difference. But visually, in person, the smooth finish is so much better. Speaking of which, I'm going to have these available on my Etsy site. I'll probably hop on tonight and get it on tonight. I wanted to see how this one turned out before I put it live. And now that it's turned out so nice, I'm going to get these put onto my Etsy site so you guys can buy these. Um, they are absolutely wonderful uh, bottle stoppers. They're beautiful and they sell really, really well. So if you guys are interested in these, I'm going to have them available on my Etsy site. Uh, the measurements for them, they're one and a half inch wide by one and a half inch tall and then two inches deep. So if you drill a hole into the bottom here um, and then mount it on there, you'll have two inches of working room from the base of the bottle stopper to the top of the bottle stopper and then one and a half inches wide and, and in depth there or in height whatever just depends on how you look at it of course but uh, and the same goes for the the old ones that I was doing before um, they're the exact same measurements they're one and a half by one and a half by two inches and uh, they're just they have a little bit of a textured surface so I will be selling those too they're gonna be going up on the Etsy site and so if you guys are interested in those come on by and I'll be selling all these off because I want to get them gone so you guys can turn these out because they are awesome. They're really beautiful and I think that you'll be really, really happy with them. Last week I talked about some new molds that I had coming in. I had a pyramid mold that uh, I was really excited to be getting in the mail for a customer and I, I cast one up. Let me show you that. So at the same time that I made those other, uh, those other blanks, I, I cast one of these up. So this is just a little pyramid and it turned out really, really cool. Uh, it, it's definitely got that ethereal cosmic, you know, look to it. The colors came out really nice. There, oh, there's a really good side. You guys can really see that one. So yeah, these turned out awesome. The only thing that I've got to do now is I've got to flatten off the bottom. Of course, when you pressurize resin inside of the pressure pot, it kind of sinks in a little bit. And so I've got to flatten off the bottom and then I need to chop off the top in order to fit it onto my bottle stopper but that's looking really cool I'm really happy with how that turned out um, my customer wanted four of those and I'm hoping that chopping off the top and then smoothing out the bottom uh, will will look okay so I'll just have to see how it turns out so two weeks ago we talked about um, making purchases that are going to save you time in order to preserve your happiness you know and and it was a big philosophy on you know, if you're having to spend money on something, spend money on something that's going to save you time so you can get the things that you actually want to do. And so from P-Town Subby, I ordered some some stuff. And so I'm going to figure I should bring that out and show you guys what we got because um, I'm super excited about this. So he sent this to me. Um, him and I were working together on, on something in here, and so we'll get to that in just a minute. But I've got in here... I've got this uh, two and seven eighths by five and a quarter by an inch block mold. Really excited about doing some of those because I've got um, some pieces of wood that are a little larger than pen size, and I don't want to cut them down. You know, they're or they're odd shaped, or you know, I want to do like I want to get some do some ribbon castings. That's where you cast out really thin layers of ribbon, and then you cut them up, and then you kind of twist and curl them in there and then stuff them in there and then fill that in with resin. I want to do some of those and so I got that block mold in order to get some of those done. So that's going to be fun. I got a four pack uh, pen blank mold. So these are one inch wide by one inch tall pen blank molds. So we're going to be getting some more pen blanks going because I have a feeling once I get the galaxy and the nebula and the uh, aurora borealis blanks, you guys are going to be excited about those. And so I picked up some more pen blank molds that I know are going to cast flat. The uh, the molds that I'm working with right now, they were kind of giving me like a, a slight dome. I mean, it wasn't wasn't deflected a whole lot, 
but it's just a slight curve, almost like you know a warped piece of wood. That's kind of the effect that I was getting because the uh, the bottom wasn't completely flat. So I got some professionally made uh, pen blanks, so that way when you guys buy pen blanks, they're completely flat, and you don't have to worry about them being um, out of square, or out of center, or anything like that. So that's really exciting. Happy about that. Also picked up a two pen blank mold, and this also came with um, a bunch of these little silicone stoppers, so I can kind of make uh, my own tube in molds. I can custom make my own length tube in molds using all these little different size stoppers, and then I can take uh, like little pieces of HDPE, shove them down in the silicone track for the pen blank and custom set my own tube in molds. So that'll be kind of fun. Really excited about doing that. So really excited about this one. This is a Geesey mold. And uh, Geesey or Geisey, I don't know how to say it. I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm butchering a man's name and I'm really, I apologize. But this is really cool. Check that out. So he 3D printed this uh, the, uh, Geesey negative and then cast that in uh, silicone. And so you can fill in this space with uh, resin and stuff, and then that will pop out with those individual cavities set in there, and then you can fill those individual cavities with other colors. So one of the ideas that I had for this was taking the black with the white uh, diamond dust that I've been using for my, my uh, galaxy background, pouring that in here and then when I pop it out all of these little sections are going to be uh, open cavities and then I take those open cavities and I'm going to fill them in with different color shifting powders and then um, you, when you drill a hole through it paint your tubes black and then you'll have all of these different shaped chevrons with different color shifting powders that'll do different things when you change the direction of it so I'm kind of excited about that we'll see how that turns out. Alright, now the creme de la creme, the mother of all the announcements that I have going on. You like that Vanna White going there? <laughs> so, I've got this right here. What this is, this is a two and a half gallon uh, tray system for the two and a half gallon Harbor Freight pressure pot that I use. So, really excited about getting one of these because I don't know if you guys have seen some of my casting videos where I put stuff down into my pressure pot. Right now, I've just got like a... Uh, bowl blank that I just set stuff on. I, I level it out with a little uh, bubble level and then I, I put my stuff directly onto that maple burl bowl blank and you know it works okay but if I'm going to be doing production pen blanks and bottle stoppers I'm going to be doing a lot of them at the same time um, I want to actually have those resting on shelves so these are HDPE, the P-Town Subby um, cuts out himself with a uh, with a CNC and so he cuts those out and it's got different shelves and then it's got this really thick one on the bottom here that's the base and then he puts um, hardware in there so that way you can actually screw these together and then that screws into the three side walls here so it's got two sides and a back and then that holds that in and then the trays slide directly into those little slots. And then he also does something else really neat and when I, I was saying last time that him and I were working on something, this is what we were working on together. So I've got my company logo and you guys may see that you know when you look at my YouTube page but he engraved my company logo into the top of this tray rack system. And so I've got my company logo engraved into the top there and there you can see it from the reverse side that'd be the bottom. But really excited about that. It turned out really nice. I'll get you a close-up of that. So you guys may be wondering, well, what the heck is your logo? You know, people have asked me, what is that? You know, because it's kind of a, it's an odd-looking logo. But these are the four crafts that, that I partake in. So this center one here, this is called a round knife. This is a leather crafting tool. Wonderful tool. Love my round knife. Um, it's got this really long sweeping blade that you keep razor sharp and it cuts through multiple layers of leather um, really super easily uh, and it, it's a wonderful tool. This bottom one here, this is called a draw knife. Um, a lot of you woodworkers probably recognize that. A draw knife is great for removing bark and different um, uh, imperfections and stuff for cleaning up uh, rounds of wood for turning them into lumber and so a draw knife is a really useful tool uh, for woodworking and so that's my woodworking and here's my leather working 
And then I also, uh, in college actually, I took a year uh, worth of courses to learn calligraphy. And I, I do still some calligraphy occasionally. And so I've got a calligraphy pen in here. And then I also do wet on wet oil landscape paintings. And so I've got a fan brush, which is one of my favorite brushes to use for painting trees and, and getting different effects, moss and stuff coming down. Because it you can either push up with it and get little um, up curled limbs or you can push down with it like if a snow is hanging heavy on a limb. And it's a very versatile tool, love the fan brush. But those are the four crafts that I do. I do leatherworking, woodworking, calligraphy, and then landscape painting. And so that's what my logo is, the four crafts that I do. And of course, SC for suits crafting. So that's the lid that's going to go on top of my rack system. So we're going to get that on there. And then I'll probably do a separate video on how to actually put that together and set that up. All right, so I also got another order from Exotic Blanks. Now, this was mostly just a restocking order, but there are a couple of things in here that I figure I'll show you guys that um, I'm going to do some experimenting with on some stuff. So, of course, around in the Pacific Northwest, we have absolutely no shortage of these, uh, but they've got these miniature pine cones that they sell on Exotic Blanks, and I picked up this big bag of these, and really excited. I'm going to try these out. And uh, I want to kind of get some, some pine cone blanks going. That's one of the things that I picked up this mold for was so that I could do some pine cone casting. I want to see um, how to do the pine cone casting. You know, there's a lot of people that do pine cone casting, but they don't really talk in depth a whole lot about how to do it. Um, Zach over at Envy Woodworks, you know, he's done some pine cone casting, but has never gone into real grave detail on it. So I'm going to do some experimenting and see. Um, how to get that done. Now when he came back from his um, 2019 planning retreat, he, that was one of the things that he said that he wants to get out and do. That was one thing that somebody requested that he do a video on. And he said that he's going to, but in the meantime, I want to try this out. I'm going to see if you got to stabilize them, if, you, if just drying them out is going to be sufficient enough, or see you know, what's going to work best for at least a Lumilite Clear that I use. So my next video that I'm going to have coming out, it's going to be an extension of the last video that I did. The last video that I did, I did a University of Oregon green and yellow uh, Sierra pen for a customer. And I took the cutoff section of that and I made it into an editor pen. And then the next video that will come out after that one is going to be taking an editor pen and converting it into the G2 conversion. I, I know you guys want to know how that's done. I haven't announced that yet, uh, but I'm going to be doing the G2 conversion video for that here coming in the near future. The next video is going to be how to do a standard editor pen, and I'm going to be using the green and yellow University of Oregon cutoff from the last video that I did, and then I'll do the how to do an editor pen with a G2 conversion um, coming up next and that's going to be in a pink camo uh, with chrome editor pen so be sure to watch out for that. Well that just about wraps it up for this week so just like I said been a really productive week been getting a lot of things done been getting some pen orders uh, up and done uh, actually already got a, an order for the uh, Calico Spalted Maple Burl Blanks. I uh, already got one guy that's bought three of those, so I've already got three of those that are off and shipped. And then while I was on my website, I actually it told me that three people have those blanks sitting in their cart right now, which is kind of exciting. I've never seen that pop up before, so that tells me that you guys are interested in those, which is why I, as soon as I got the bandsaw set up, and got it dialed in, I hopped on there and immediately started making more because you guys are interested in those and I can see that, you know, you guys are getting on the site and you're clicking on it and putting it in your shopping cart, obviously. And so I got that going so that way I can get more of those out for you guys and we'll get those going. If there's anything that you guys want to see more of, um, see me sell off colors that you want, like I said earlier, let me know down in the comment section below and I'll be happy to try and do anything that I can um, so that way you guys can get stuff in your hands custom made. You know, you can go on to Penn State, you can go on to Exotic Blanks and you can see a lot of really cool stuff, but you know, you can't really always get somebody that does things custom just for you and that's kind of the mold that I'm trying to fill. Ha! There was pun intended there. If there's something that you want specific, you know, and you've got this vision in your head, then I want to try and see what I can do in order to make that happen. Because there's not a whole lot of people that you can just write to and get on and do that. 
um, that are out in an open forum like this. You know, if you're on some of like the closed forums on Facebook, um, you know, there's plenty of folks on there if you actually get into those communities. Um, but if not, you know, there's not too much of an open forum until you actually get into things like that. So if you guys are interested in stuff like that, go ahead and let me know and uh, I'll see what I can do for you. So that wraps it up. I'm going to get back to work out here in the shop. So we've got plenty of exciting things to do. I've got a brand new bandsaw that I've got just all sorts of things that I want to cut up and get sized and ready to go. Um, I've got a friend of mine that actually has ordered a pepper mill that I've got to get a maple burl piece set up. Uh, six inch long blank to make a pepper mill for her and so I'm gonna get that going here shortly and we'll get that done up so thank you so much for joining me out here in the suits crafting wood shop so this is tactical painter signing out be sure to like share and subscribe throw a subscribe button in here in the center as always and check out some of my other videos here on the sides have a great week and happy turning